Hi everyone, this is Sharan. Welcome to my channel. Over the last few days, we have covered various concepts about a pandas library, how to create a data frame, how to do some basic operations such as uh, uh, iterating over a data frame, sorting it, doing aggregation group by, as well as how to identify various missing data and uh, how, how we go about uh, handling those missing data and uh, uh, building some interesting visualizations using pandas. So now the next important topic that's very important for anyone who is going to work on a data science project is NumPy. NumPy is also called as numerical Python. It can be treated as a uh, replacement to MATLAB. NumPy is extremely fast. It's, it's been estimated that it is about 30 times faster as compared to an Python list. The reason why it is so, so much faster is because uh, whenever we create a NumPy array, it's been stored in a continuous blocks of memory. And uh, the way uh, NumPy is written, it is optimized for the most recent computer architecture. So it's made use of the computer architecture to the best to optimize the runtime and uh, improve the performance. So these are all the various reasons why NumPy is really important. Uh, and uh, over the next few days, we are going to go through the details of NumPy, how to perform various uh, uh, operations using the NumPy library and uh, why it has been useful and uh, how it can help us in our data science projects. Come, let's go into the uh, first tutorial and let in, uh, learn about the basics of NumPy. As explained in the introduction, you can see on the top uh, some of the advantages of using Python. Uh, so Python is extremely useful when we are going to work on uh, mathematical, when, you, when we are doing some mathematical operations. Uh, uh, and or uh, matrix operations. So it's very helpful when we are doing something like a Fourier transformation, linear algebra. Uh, so these are all extremely useful when we are going to uh, learn about the algorithms or going to, Im going to implement an algorithm. So in those cases, when we want uh, the algorithms to be extremely fast uh, and efficient, it, it's always good to use NumPy. So NumPy has a great usage when it comes to data science projects, either directly or indirectly. So indirectly, the algorithms that you are using might be making use of the advantages of NumPy. And uh, in some cases, you might have to uh, do the mathematical operations by yourself. Uh, and uh, hence, uh, so either ways, NumPy will be really important. So coming into the tutorial, so uh, in order to use NumPy, we have to, of course, import NumPy. So we use import NumPy as NP. So it's, it's enough for us to call NP uh, whenever we want to call the NumPy package. So let me execute this. So hopefully for you as well, like uh, this uh, package should be imported without any issues. But if in case you have any issues, you need to close this window to back to the anaconda command prompt and uh, do a pip install NumPy and ensure this particular package is installed properly. And uh, if you restart Jupyter Notebook and if you execute this command, then it should be all right. But yeah, it's really important to ensure that NumPy package is uh, rightly, correctly installed. So now we are going to see how to create an array. Like we'll start with an one dimensional array and we will see how to create two dimensional array, three dimensional array and, uh, and the uh, various other basic operations. So coming to the first one, so what, what we are going to do is we are saying like uh, uh, this is the array. So it has uh, numbers from one to 10 and we are using np.array. So we are making, we are calling this uh, numerical Python or NumPy and making sure that this array is being considered as a NumPy array. So what happens here is when I execute this, so as you see the data type is coming up as a NumPy array and when we print this particular array, so it's still, it is still an array, but it has been treated as a NumPy array. So the other, uh, the advantage in NumPy array is the, uh, whatever array that you are going to define, it needs to be homogeneous. So it means that if it has numbers, like everything should be numbers. So if it has characters, like everything should be characters. If in case you have a combination of numbers as well as characters, so it will be considered as an string array. So every single element in the array should be of the same data type. And uh, yeah, so that's how you create a uh, one dimensional array. So moving on to the second one, like let's see how to create a two dimensional array. 
So here we have only one square bracket and we have all the elements within within it uh, comma separated. When we want to create a two dimensional array, uh, which means that uh, there is two axes to it, like it has some rows as well as some columns. So then what we need to do is we need to separate them by a comma. So as you see here, there is an first initial set of uh, elements that are present within a square bracket. And after a comma, there is another set of elements in a square bracket. And both of them together is also within the square bracket. So this is the two dimensional array that we are going to create. So what we are using is we are using np, like which is numpy.array, and then we are defining this uh, elements and then we are passing this into an array 2d variable so i'm going to print this array and then I, we are going to see what is the shape of this array so when i execute this so this is how the array is being stored so the top five elements the first five elements is coming up as the first row and the second five elements is coming up as the second row so as you see the shape what it says is it says that there are two rows and five columns in this array so this is how uh, uh, we can use the name of the array dot shape in order to get uh, the shape of the array right uh, so this say, clearly says that it's two dimensional because it has only rows and columns so this is a two dimensional array with this particular shape and this is how it's being stored so now let's see let's try to add an another set of elements like uh, this is the additional element that we are going to add to this array and now uh, when I re-execute the same sets of uh, uh, commands, let's see what's happening. So as you see here, it's still, it is still a uh, two dimensional array. So this is how the array would, uh, would appear. So this time it has three rows and five columns and the dimensions is two. So we, would, we can get the number of dimensions using uh, array name dot and dim. So maybe if I copy this, command and then paste it here and let me re-execute it so as you see so here also the number of dimensions is 2 because it has only rows and columns there are two rows and five columns and here we have three rows and five columns it's two dimensional uh, so that's how we create a uh, two dimensional array so moving on to three dimensions so now what we are going to do is we are going to we are having a set of uh, like two sets of uh, arrays and we have a comma separated and again like following it we have another two sets of array so like if you see like uh, this is a part of the second array and this is the another array both of them is present within a square bracket and if you see the whole list is also within a square bracket so this would be the first array and this would be the second array, like each one of them has uh, two arrays within them. So let me print this and then show you what's happening, like how it looks like. So if you see here, this is how, this is how like this whole, uh, this whole thing is one three dimensional array. So the first part is uh, being stored here and first part is represented here and second part is represented here. So here, as you see, there are uh, five columns uh, two rows and there are two layers two layers or you can call it as uh, like right as a depth of two so uh, so this is this is an three-dimensional array as you see so this would be the first layer it has two rows and five columns this would be the second layer it can be treated as like one array on the uh, second array behind it that could be multiple layers like uh, as you had multiple layers the depth would increase accordingly which means that the first value that you see here so it would increase with the number of array. So let me just uh, show you what would happen. So if I copy the whole thing here, and uh, let me just uh, uh, paste it. So now let me execute and show you what's happening. So as you see here, what's happening is I have copied this and then pasted it again. So the number of layers is now three. So this is the first layer. So the first layer comes here, the second layer, and then there's one more layer behind it. So there are three layers. So this, this will be really useful concept when you are going to learn deep learning or image recognition. So where that could, there would be like a three dimensional matrices that you would be handling on, and then there would be requirement for, uh, for us to do various mathematical operations or, like, or matrix operations on those uh, data points. So this is how uh, a three dimensional array is being created. 
So now let's uh, move on to reshaping an array. So now let's say we, we first generate a uh, single array with, uh, with a range of values. And then after creating this one dimensional array, let's say we want to reshape it uh, as per our requirement. So that's what we are going to see here. So let me just for time being comment these lines and then execute this. So as you see here, it's a one dimensional array. It has about, uh, it has 24 elements. So since we use a, a, a range uh, uh, functionality here, so from zero, it would start and then it would stop once 24 elements have been created. So now this is still one dimensional array and the number of dimension is one. It has only one uh, uh, set, like it has only like uh, 24 elements. Uh, it's uh, one dimensional. And now let's say we want to reshape this. So let's see how to reshape it. So while reshaping, like if we want to reshape an array, we can simply use reshape and then we can, we can mention how it needs to be reshaped. So let me execute this and then show you what's happening. So as you see here, uh, so in the previous case, what we saw was uh, like uh, in this particular case, it had uh, three layers and it has uh, each and every matrix within a particular layer had two rows and five columns. So here we are going to have uh, three layers again, and then we are going to have two rows and four columns. So as you see here, so there are three layers, uh, there are three matrices, and each one of them has two rows and uh, four columns, like one, two, three, four. So we can, uh, we can like play around with these numbers and then create an array that is uh, uh, required like as per the uh, expectation. So the only thing is it, we need to ensure that whatever values that we are giving it here, it should be like it should be able to match to 24. So we have, uh, we have four columns and two rows, which is four into two, eight. And then we are having three layers, which is eight into three twenty four, which is exactly matching with this. So if I am going to remove this four and then going to mention it as five, so let me execute it. And as you see, it's not able to reshape because uh, uh, the total number of elements in the array is twenty four, and it can't be reshaped into whatever requirement that we have given. So that needs to be ensured. Uh, so now it should it should be fine. And as I mentioned, so in case of NumPy array, it needs to be homogeneous. So let me show you what's happening here. So this is a simple array, it has four elements. And when I execute this, we can see the data type of this is integer 32. So integer 32 means that it is integer and four bytes of length, like one byte is eight bit, so 32 bit. So integer 32. So when I so when it is an integer matrix, if when I try to multiply it by two, so what happens is each and every element within the particular matrix will be multiplied by two. So when uh, when we did this particular operations in an Python list, what would happen is the elements within that list would be repeated twice. Whereas in uh, in in NumPy, whenever we do a multiplication, it it the value will be multiplied with each and every element if it is a numerate if it is a numerate uh, array. Each and every element will be multiplied with that particular value. And uh, moving on to the uh, next one, like uh, we have we have the same matrix, but the last one is an character. So now let's see what's happening. So when I execute this, what we are seeing is we are seeing it as u. U is nothing but an Unicode string of length eleven. So depending upon the values that we pass, uh, so it creates an uh, data type by itself. So since one of the elements is stringed, so this can't be treated as a numerical array. So what's happened? What's happening is it's been converted into an Unicode string, because as I mentioned previously, uh, in, in case of NumPy array, it is homogeneous. Like every single element in the array should be of same data type. So even though this is uh, one, it will be treated as an Unicode string. So now, uh, let's see what's happening when I try to multiply it by two. So when I try to multiply it by two, what's happening is it is throwing some error because uh, all the elements in this array is being treated as an Unicode string and we can't multiply it with a numerical value. We can't do any mathematical operation on top of it. So that's why it's it's given as an error. Uh, and uh, so defining the data type. Now let's say, so now here in this case, we are not defining the data type of the array. So by default, uh, the 
uh, by default the the package itself is uh, defining uh, based on the input that we are passing it is defining or it is giving a particular data type to those uh, uh, to those array uh, if we want to pass on and data type we can do we can uh, we can uh, do so what we need to do is we need to pass we need to create a parameter called a d type and pass on the uh, data type for that particular array so here what we are mentioning is we are mentioning i2 which is integer with two bytes which will be uh, like a int int 16 so when i execute this so what's happening is it's creating it has been treating this array as an integer of length 16 16 bit so if i pass on instead of uh, two instead of uh, two uh, if i pass on four it will be treated as integer 32. So now let's see. Uh, I'm going to add an character here to the end, and I'm going to I'm going to try to treat this array as an integer array by defining the data type as i2. Let's see what's happening now. So when I try to execute it, it's throwing up an error because it's saying that one of the element is not an integer, and hence its data type cannot be integer. So this can't be considered. So that's why it's throwing up an error. So maybe if I remove this particular element, so then it should work fine. Otherwise, like if we pass on the data type as a unique code, so then still it should be fine. And the various other operations are, let's see what, what, what would happen when we try to convert an uh, integer array into a float array or float array into an integer array and uh, so on. So here we have, we have a normal uh, an integer array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force it uh, and convert it into an float by using as type. So this is the integer array. So we are doing integer array dot as type as float. So then what happens is this integer array would be converted into an float and I'm going to print the new float array as well as its data type. So let me execute this one. So as you see here, like this particular array doesn't have any decimal points but when we convert this integer array into a float it comes up with a decimal point decimal point as well as the data type is being considered as float 32 which is a float of length 32 bits uh, so let's see the other way around now so uh, how what happens when we convert an uh, float array into an integer so here this has decimal point so this is definitely an float array so we are going to use as type and pass a value as integer. So this is going to be converted as integer and we are going to print the array as well as its data type. So now we can see that uh, these uh, uh, decimal points are removed and the values are being considered as an integer. So in order to understand like uh, how it is happening, let me uh, pass on the value as 3.9 just to show you that whether uh, uh, whether it is rounding off or it is removing the decimal point. So when I execute this, we can still see the value is three here. So which means that uh, when we convert and float array into an integer array, the values that are behind the decimal point are being dropped off. So that's how it converts into an uh, float array into an uh, integer array. So that's all for today. So what we have seen is we have seen how to create and uh, how to create and one dimensional, two dimensional as well as three dimensional array. How we can use reshape and create an array with uh, uh, as per the requirement. Also some of the basic operations like uh, uh, identifying the data type uh, and uh, identifying the number of dimensions and uh, performing like a uh, basic operations uh, such as uh, multiplying with the value in case of a numerical array and how to convert an integer array into a float and the float into an integer and what happens uh, to those array when we do these operations. So that is it for today. Uh, there isn't any exercise that I have mentioned, but it will be good uh, if you can try this with various other data. Try to come up with a new array uh, with, a, with, with a random values as well as try to do some mathematical operations and then see what's happening. I think that's it for now. Uh, we will see in the next session. If you like this video, if you have learned something new today, uh, give a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And if you think this might be helpful for someone who is trying to learn data science, uh, please share this video with them. Uh, yep, yeah, that's it for now.